Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast. Each week we bring you the very best self-publishing tips, tools and resources for authors. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Wendy Fowler. And I'm Trudy J. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the sunshine. I'm really yeah. happy. Is anyone else? Thank you. Yeah, it's really hot. <laughs> it's actually like I've already got my aircon on and it's really yeah. early. I wish I had aircon. I'm sitting here in my little box that turns out yeah. is really hot. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. next to the pool but it's still really hot anyway enough of my whining um this week we are talking about um someone who if you've finished a manuscript and you're kind of going now what yeah. first manuscript you've ever it's done the now what yeah. it's the now what this is the now mm-hmm. what section so yeah there might be um people out there you, you're thinking did, did it had an awesome 2023 you managed to get that book done you gave yourself a break over Christmas New Year's period maybe and now you want to get back into it what do you do that's kind of what we're talking yeah, about we just today. want to simplify things for you so you're not chasing your tail there's a lot of noise out there it's hard to know where to where to begin you know mm. um so yeah. yeah we just want to simplify that for you yeah everyone everyone tells you all the different things you absolutely have to do and yeah and there are some you don't, things you absolutely have to yeah, do. But you don't take notice of anyone else but us. Yeah, no, exactly. Listen to works. us and no one else. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only way forward. Yeah. Starting absolutely. the year off good. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so yeah. so we've got, what have we got? 10 steps. 10 things, well, not really steps, but things that we think you need to uh, make sure that you're looking into or considering once you finish the manuscript to help you get it up and out there into the world and being sold to all those millions of readers that are just gagging to hear, read your book. So. Yeah, okay. Gagging. Yeah. I couldn't think of another word. I did pause no. and think. Desperate. 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 Yeah. I'd already really want to read it. Looking for new material. Highly yeah. motivated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All of those things would have been great, but that's not where I went. So <laughs> let's just move on. Um, all right. So first thing, the very first thing that we suggest you do once you've finished a manus- manuscript is take a break. Mm. Why? Why are we taking a well, break? Well, the thing about that, you know, like we've all been – all of those of us that have been writing a long time have all, have always had a deadline it's a rush and then we haven't had time to stop and step back from the book give it a break and so then when you come back to it and in a few days or however long you can give it it's fresh and you can look at it with a clear set of eyes and a, you know a really good look at it and go oh actually that's fantastic um but there might be a few tweaks i need mm-hmm. so that's why you need time and distance from the book that you stayed up till midnight finishing yeah yeah and I would I would give yourself at least I mean you you know we we're experienced authors we'd kind of turn things around fairly quickly but I think if this is your first or second or third novel you still want to kind of I would give yourself a month if you can like just like Mm -hmm. a decent chunk of time because I I don't know about anyone else but when I go back to my books that I've written and I haven't read for a while I'm like oh Oh, this is one this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Oh, it's okay. And oh, oh no, but I need to, and I can see much more clearly what I need to change or how I need to change it. Um, I think also having a look at it for another perspective, and by that I mean as I plug in and get the book read, read it back to me. Yeah, so yeah. I'm listening to it while I'm reading it at the same time, and you see and hear uh, you hear a lot more than you see if that mm. makes any sense yeah. so as you're doing it, you go, well, that barks like a dog. I need to work on that, or mm. you know. Um, so that's an, if you don't have huge amount of time to break between going back to it, which I mm. never do, that's a good way to look at it through another set, sort of nice. another. I, the other thing I like to do is, and I've only just started doing it recently because my editor did it for me, and I can't believe that I only just started doing it the last couple of books, is go back and do like a, it's kind of like a chapter summary, but not in depth. Like it's like chapter one, they meet for the first time, chapter two, they run around and try and find the thing and mm. an explosion happens and and just like a, a one or two sentence per chapter and that allows you to kind of get a sense of the flow for the whole ah, book it's a good idea and and for me I was always sort of feeling a little bit like oh, I didn't quite know where everything was and and just having that kind of chapter by chapter you know it's, yeah. it would, won't take up more than a couple of pages and you can kind of read through it and go okay well I can see that there's this weird gap here or mm-hmm. that maybe I should insert something here or maybe I need to do that or next thing and it just gives you that kind of overall Macro context view kind yeah of thing. yeah that, that maybe when you're lost in the weeds of well, should I choose this word or what mm-hmm. how do I describe this scene that you don't see it in yeah. the same way so that's something that taking a break and then coming back to it and being able to do that kind of as uh, a, a a macro view is actually really helpful as nice. well. Like um, that idea. It's cool. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so 
both mm. excellent ideas. I, yeah. I could, there's no way I could ever leave something for a month because I would literally forget by because I've got a memory like a goldfish, so I'd forget <laughs> could be anything. But, I think but a, a week, few, da- week I think or two, a, you know, a few a days to fine. a week or two, yeah. yeah. Forget what if you though, can, forget it's just to let your brain or... kind of. I, I what forget. it was meant to yeah yeah everything. i don't know i just well that's the point but that's why i like it because you do forget and then it's like yeah. coming back to it like you're editing someone else's work almost that's how yeah. i yeah. you know yeah i also have a mind like a brain like a sip a memory like a sip but that's yeah. why i like it but yeah that's I, and that's it the thing is we all learn what mm. process works for us yeah yeah and yeah. we're always fine-tuning i mean i've only just started doing the reading Mm. again yeah and it makes a massive difference yeah at the very least don't start editing on the day that you type the end especially if it's at 11 59 p.m yeah (laughs) how's that at least wait till 11 59 a.m yeah Yeah. Yeah. have a sleep Mm. three days later preferably yeah Um, yeah okay so that's point number one second point is editing so this is the next most important thing that you need to think about um and the editing so there's two parts that there's the self-editing, like going back yourself and, and re rejudging and trying to figure that Listening out. Listening to mm. it, like Wendy was saying. Which yeah. you've got to do first, right? You can't just write the first draft and then not touch it again. Yeah. Not unless yeah. you're some kind of Superstar. writing savant. And yeah. I hate you. Well, unless you follow yeah. what's his name, the oh, I can't remember his name. Heinle, Heinlands, Heinlands Laws. Heinlands rules. Rules, something like that. But I don't follow that. Yeah. I don't believe in that. So, you know, sh- threw that one out. Everyone's um, different. Everyone is different, and I should not mock those who never go back and edit after mm-hmm. one draft. Um, yeah. But generous. anyway, back on the edits. So professional editing, you definitely need one at some point, but I would start off with the, with the self-editing, get, us, get it as good as you can possibly get it, um, yep. and it then is. consider who you might want to get it professionally edited. And, and that's also not just you might want to get a developmental editor to help you kind of figure out what you need to if it's especially if it's your first or second book in early days you might want to have someone to give you a bit of feedback on mm. maybe a, a, a things that you've left out maybe things that you need to amp up or whatever on a yeah on a wider context and not just on the you spelt this wrong and it needs to be a comma after that whatever you know um, I think that's probably the best form of editing that's required is to get make sure that the book flows and 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 has consistency mm. the grammar and that's all vitally important too but that making sure the get the story well. right first kind of the big as stuff a, first as yeah. a reader i am more inclined to forgive a misspelt word or a comma that's incorrect than i am to forgive a character who's acting inconsistently Absolutely. or a really yeah. big kind of plot hole that plot i can't hole. yeah that insane. i can't get over you know yeah. so i definitely think that you want to have that kind of that person who can give you that kind of wider bigger again yeah. the macro right like that bigger sense of things of the of the novel as a whole yeah. like they are unwieldy right like yeah. writing an entire book is an unwieldy thing it's not like a 2000 word essay it's like minimum sort of usually 50,000 plus words very few that you... people of any can sit down and write a completely cohesive story from a to z and not have not need some kind of you know redirecting yeah. or rejigging or filling yeah. out or whatever yeah and it, even if it's and, and and our next one is Number three is beta readers, but I think almost beta readers could come in before you yeah. get a professional editor or after. So this is maybe relevant for us. But kind of, I see it part of it. Yeah. But yeah. also another really important thing is if you're really new to this, is understand the different types of editing, and we won't go through it now because we everything we're talking about today we've got multiple episodes on each and we'll in the show notes we'll put links to those so you can mm-hmm. dive deep into that mm-hmm. but it's we've had many editors on and it's important to understand when you're outsourcing editing or what type of editing you want and what you expect and whether they can deliver that so you're kind of talking the same language so mm-hmm. that's really good and, and to get recommendations from other authors and i would add to that too as if you're if you're sort of financial um, situation doesn't mean that mm. you can shell out for a big edit get that content edit and then get yourself some editing software like pro writing aid or grammarly at, yeah. le- at the very least yeah uh, and and i still put all my books through that before it mm. goes to an editor anyway yeah i like pro writing um, aid but yeah. um either or, or or some sort of software like that will help yeah. as well yeah, yeah. you and, learn and a lot from doing that get friends to read your book uh-huh. things like that just just be um 
be mindful of criticism from friends. That's what you wanted to say, isn't it? Yeah, I did. I was just trying to think of a way to say it. But mm -hmm. all, I, all I wanted to say was like, so A, if you're writing a romance and you've got a, um, your husband always reads thrillers, but he said he'll read it because he's a kind of nice person. If he reads yeah. it and says there's not enough, it's not fast paced enough and there's not enough action. Re remember to yourself, well, that's actually because he re normally reads thrillers and he doesn't read romance. Like you, you kind of need to get someone who reads romance to read your romance novel because yeah. they will intuitively maybe know and understand the the way it should flow um versus someone however who if another... he's really good at grammar and he his oh, yeah. main gig is an english teacher copy editing which is where you're going through the spelling and the punctuation mm -hmm. and the grammar great <laughs> yeah, do it. i mean he might have insight he might pick up stuff but it's just don't just, it's really easy to kind of get when i first started out writing i, w I was in a in a awesome awesome group of writers and we used to we used to write short stories and you would get someone and, and this is where I learned this is I would get um we'd we'd read each other's book um chapters or or short stories or whatever and then you'd go back and we did it every week. We were very religious and I'm not religious, we we're very consistent diligent. about diligent, thank you, mm -hmm. um, about how we we did it. And um and you'd get people picking up the same paragraph and three different people would have three different opinions yeah, on how exactly. I would fix it. Yeah. But but they would, <laughs> so you would be kind of sitting there going, well, what am I supposed to do here? But it was always about, there was a problem with the paragraph. So you kind of knew, yeah. I'm yeah. going to go look at this paragraph. I'm not necessarily going to do exactly what they're telling me to do because there's three different opinions. There's an issue there that needs addressing. But there's an issue. So just just look at it like that. Like someone says to you, oh, there's this whole bit and I don't like how we did that and da, da, da. Well, maybe don't say I have to make these changes exactly as they say, but just say maybe there's an issue that I need to look at and just take another yeah, look. No. Yeah, you I'm do need to be a little bit thick-skinned and you do need to also be aware of the fact that it is your work. Yeah. Bottom line. But they, if you've got someone completely objective, subject mm. objective, looking at your work, then they're not going to be personal. You know, yeah. and that's where an editor comes in. Mm -hmm. An editor will come in and go, you know, They're that's professional the about it. Yeah. And yeah. I do think actually sometimes other authors tend to be more critical than readers, if that makes sense. Definitely. So, so mm -hmm. I, I do think you can kind of find someone who go, Oh, well, this is this is terrible. Like I think you should completely change this. It's all you've you've written the wrong point of views and oh whatever. And maybe it's not quite as serious as the Right, and they're not doing it to be mean, and they're not doing it. No. It's just because they have a different set of kind of um, yep. ideas of how it should be done. And it's yeah. the same as editors. You go through editors and find the ones that suit you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like right. Trudy likes to have screeds and screeds of notes sent back to her uh, about what's right and what's wrong in her book. I, on the other hand, would hyperventilate if that was the case. So my editor knows she just writes a short couple of paragraphs at the beginning of the edit to say these are the, what's going on i've just made notes through the book as you go boom yeah done. i don't like to have screeds and screeds i want to point out of course you do i just, just such a it, dweeb <laughs> you do so i would prefer to have none and for them to write back and say this is <laughs> brilliant no best need. book i've ever read yes that would be my preference <laughs> to be fair but oh, at least oh well I think there's a mindset thing there too. It's like at least there's something to work with, right? Yeah. And and you're and for all that you say you don't like to have lots and lots. I mean, she's giving you edits to make and you'll make the changes that are required, right? Like because this is about yeah, making your book better and not there's a thing. And I think when you first start out, you feel like the the book is connected to you. It's like a piece of you. Yeah. And so when someone dares to critique it, it's like yeah. they're shoving Personal. a and a sword Target. through your heart yeah yeah <laughs> and um and it's not that it's it's like once the book is done it's like you almost have to take a step away from it and it becomes something separate from you that you can then mold and yeah. and fix and change to being something even better so shining yeah. star a shining Absolutely. star perfect Next. um yeah. so we did to have number three was beta readers but i think that's all part of what we've just talked about that's so part i think of it. we can yeah. move on from that so number four is identify the genre and where it sits in in the amazon bookshelf and find comparable books so now you or whatever bookshelf if you're wide yeah 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 if it's yeah. wide multiple bookshelves obviously um mm. so why is this important because when you start marketing your book it's it's how readers are going to know this is a book that they want to read 
yeah. it's how they this understand is this is a sharp question to answer. And yeah. well, and it's also how what kind of cover you choose, how you write your blurb, whether it, you know, what kind of voice your blurb has, what you say in it, how long it is, all of that kind of stuff, and um, how you publish it as well. Because some some genres do much better uh wide than others um and where the readers are you know in terms of how readers tend to read that particular sub genre or sub genre so it is, it's really important yeah and again this is often a place when people are writing their first or second manuscript that it, it can be really tricky to identify that you know often you all of us like to want to put everything that we love into our first books and that might have a, a bit of mystery and a bit of romance and a bit of sci-fi you yeah. know so it can be tricky so you want to find somewhere where it leans into more you know you just want to it's about connecting with readers mm. and often readers. I think often your first book is just the, the what comes out what you've been kind of mm. um desperate yeah. to write about for up until the time when you actually took the leap and started mm -hmm. writing so it might, and, and you're not thinking of it in terms of how marketable it is and how yeah. where, where it fits. And, and it may not fit precisely anywhere. Yeah. Um, which, and it's yeah. totally fine because honestly, the, the number one thing is actually finishing a book to get, mm. you know, to, to get you started on this journey, whether you want to be a full-time or part-time professional it's author. It's learning the journey, isn't it? It's, it's learning, learning the journey. The process. And yeah. so... Doing very your often your first book is a learning tool not mm. necessarily a massive money making tool just yeah. putting that out there right up the front yeah yeah and that's okay but this is a process that you need to go through to kind mm -hmm. of understand how it's yeah. going to be next time and next time and next time like this is a journey not a yeah it's kind of like know. your apprenticeship in a way you're yeah, doing that yeah doing you the, are... you're a crafts person so you're learning the craft yeah absolutely so if we've identify so how do we identify the genre that's that's the next thing if you have someone who's just started writing a book mm -hmm. how do we figure out what genre we're in just quickly well this could be again where you think it fits versus where it possible others see it. it could be a question for editors or again those friends and beta readers uh, fellow writers you know that you're maybe in a writer's group that you could ask where they see it fitting like is it a, is it really a science fiction romance or is it more just a science fiction novel with a romantic element there is a difference a big difference romance is always about the relationship and then the science fiction is the sprinkle is where is the setting if you like whereas a science fiction novel with a romantic element romantic elements if we're talking about that appear in almost every genre so it doesn't necessarily make it a romance so it's um, I would talk to other writers about it if you can talk about what the plot is and see what their feedback is you don't they don't have to read it you can just tell them mm. and you'll get experienced authors I've seen it in forwards I'll ask the question well if you took out for example uh, the couple's story does it still hold up as a as a book well yes it does so therefore okay it's not a romance it's this with a romantic element um, and the other way is to really think about the the setting and the themes in the book too that will often yeah. direct to what genre it is and reading right lots yeah. of reading and lots of reading, reading. Seeing and, what's in and, your, and again, what do you love yeah i mean you're right hopefully you're yeah. writing what you love so yeah. you then should have a really good grasp i mean you're not gonna read thrillers your entire life and then decide to write a romance tomorrow it's no. just that's just not the way how it rolls so you must have a good feeling of what you love and why you love it yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you consistently read that right yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. And, and what are you just going and looking at even mm. just go and look on Amazon, see, search around, yeah. and see what's in the genres that you think it might be and, mm. and go from there. So. And this isn't necessary. I mean, this is something that's well worth putting the time into because, again, it's a learning process for you as well. And yeah. you might want to be unique, which is another really common element for all of us at study. You want to write the unique groundbreaking novel, but that <laughs> uniqueness is, is great originality is great but it's not necessarily great when it comes to kind of 
I'm sorry, but you have to slot your novel into a into a especially box. romance, right? We're not talking <laughs> about one-off box. Or that, uh... to be honest, any genre fiction. You know, if you're writing a yeah. thriller without any thrilling aspects, then it's not a thriller. You know, that's not what readers want. So, mm. yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so that's identify the genre. So the next thing we've we've got, in, and it, this is you can write the blurb whenever you like but the blurb is the next thing we're going to talk about yes. here um i know authors who write the blurb before they even start so it keeps them mm. on track and they make sure that they've got lots of all the right hooks all the things that they need to have in yep. the book and it's there and it's it's done um but yeah, it's neither of us however right? no neither, no i neither am not us, i am not neither that person yeah, um no. i would like to be that person but Love i am to not be that, that person. person um so again it's the same kind of thing look at other blurbs look at yeah. the books that you love look at the ones that are comparable to your book and see how they've written it um so for example uh, a thriller would be short and snappy and just as fast-paced as, as i hope the book would be a romance um they've changed over time but it used to be that you would have the the female version and then the male version of the story or um sometimes that whether they're in first person or third person or um yeah just no i think they're shorter now it's like you know he was often, her he was yeah. her brother's best friend or you know like yeah. bum, yeah. Bum, bum, and, and then and, and now they're da 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 bum, 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 you know yeah. like quite snappy which will mm -hmm. lead through in some situations not all historical yeah. romance is still fairly um yeah and yeah and it, and it depends on the genre right like so fantasy Very is much so. longer mm -hmm. and more kind of yeah. educated and will often have weird words to denote yeah. the the country mm -hmm. the made-up country that they're in and the, mm -hmm. the character whatever you know you just have to know what kind of a blurb is expected in the genre that you yeah. have are you putting your book into and, and i think i think the key points here again when you're starting out is inevitably you will overwrite the blurb initially most um first or newer authors will want to put more plot elements into the blurb because yeah. they feel like they won't really want to tell a reader what to expect um so that 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 is almost nine times out of ten that will happen to you and secondly what you write initially is not what you're going to end up with in terms of the blurb it's something that people rewrite and rewrite and it's a different type of writing and mm. honestly most authors struggle with them. <laughs> it's really yeah. hard to write a good blurb they're not just in style yeah. that's uh, another they good place to look them. for is bookbub go and look at bookbub's yeah. blurbs for the books that they put out each week um and you'll find some yeah, awesome examples really of good. blurbs Book um, pubs, but look again, at reads, look at look at social media. You'll see like hooks. Yeah. If you're wondering what a hook yeah. is, go and look mm. at TikTok and and follow yeah. a hashtag exactly. romance novel or dark mm. romance, and you'll see you'll see it'll sometimes seeing it visually, um, even if it's on a screen, makes it easier to kind of convey. Mm. But again, this is workshopping with other writers can really help on this one. Mm, exactly it's easier to write someone else's blurb than it is to write your yeah, own yeah and you absolutely oh, so do not have easier. to read the book to to understand or write the blurb in fact mm. in many ways that's why it is easier when you haven't written the book or you mm. haven't read the story to yeah. write the blurb for it you can be a lot harder about what what goes in and what what's, yeah. um what stays yeah. in and what goes out okay so that's a blurb i think we've done episodes on the blurb so i think we can we kind have of leave it at that. again we'll be um, on the links in mm -hmm. yeah so the next one is cover and again we've done episodes on the cover so we're not going to yeah. go too in depth on this no. but just this is the this is something you need to organize you need to know um as Shah said earlier you need to know the genre so you know the style of cover that you're going to need yeah. and you need to find someone to do that whether yeah. it's via a pre-made or whether it's a um a cover designer designing it from scratch yeah so. yeah and again 99 times 99.9 .9 times out of 100 this is where you do not want to do diy because unless you've got graphic design experience and even then mm -hmm. you need really solid marketing direction and art direction for your graphic design skills you know it's not enough to know design you need to understand the the shorthand of covers for your particular genre that you've identified mm -hmm. so it's really really important and you know, honestly, what, and I don't want to use the word get away with, but I think this market has matured a lot over the last 10 years that we've been doing this, 11 years, and and so has readers. They've become more sophisticated in terms of their expectations, and now there is absolutely zero difference between a self-published novel and a traditionally published novel in terms of covers, you know. Mm, yeah. In fact, in many ways, the self-publishers are leading 
leading the charge on that one mm, so yeah. yeah and you just want to make sure it's appropriate and again going back just like we said about know where your market is is looking at the covers as well mm, absolutely okay and then the number seven is setting up the business side of things so this is one where you need a couple of strong coffees or the beverage of <laughs> your choice <laughs> write yourself a list <laughs> of a treaty will go over some of the things but this is just one of those admin things that you have to do if you're going to go into this to publish your book it's that 80 20 rule right yeah. 20 percent business and yeah. you know that side of the 80 percent. and even writing. i would say write everything down like even if you mm -hmm. just keep a word document just to write you know write down what your hey you know different things that you set up keep it written down Mm, and yep. once you set it up though a lot of the things then it's set up sort of you won't have forward. to do them again yeah mm. so so let's just quickly go through some of them so one is going to be how is you're a business you're, you're going to publish a book on amazon you are going to be a business so how is that going to be set up and it's really hard for us to advise on that because we're here in new zealand yeah. and in new zealand you can either be a sole trader or a limited liability company would be two main options but that is not going to be what it is if you are outside of new zealand so i have mm -hmm. no idea what they would be but whatever yeah. it is know about the structure know f find out from um and, and maybe the best way to do it is to contact an accountant find a someone that you trust um locally to where you are pop in and talk to them and say look this is what i'm going to do i need to set up um as a business how is what is the best way to do that yeah. and they can advise you and they know they'll know because they understand what you have to do in terms of taxes and putting your taxes in every year how that's going to work all of those kinds of things you need to set up. Are you going Separate to have bank accounts, all sorts of things, bank where accounts, the bills are going to be paid from, tax you know, numbers, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, all it's of just those... a whole, the whole thing on it. Mm, yeah. yeah. So these are all things that you and need to, to be think fair. About. The individual retail sites, and we're talking that um, we're talking about like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, um, Apple. They have like how to set up the account. On draft to digital. They all draft to digital. They really have good. some extensive yeah. um, tools there to help you and and. Um, yeah, the information's out there don't panic it's all it's there all don't there. panic and you can just pub publish as joe blogs if you're joe blogs you can yeah. just publish your book as joe blogs you don't need it a... but if your name's not joe blogs don't use that no okay? don't use joe blogs um, <laughs> but you need to know how that gets set up right like so for new zealand mm. it's called salt trailer trader but yeah whatever it is in your country you need to know and understand yeah. how that and you works need a tax and yeah. number gonna... to put in and all of yeah. that kind of stuff you need to fill out the tax forms on yeah. each of the platform yeah. they get a bit yeah. annoying if you don't fill out yeah. the form ask me how i know um yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no we're not going to because no, we know because we know story. we know why yeah. right yeah. we know yeah. why i know that um, mm. But yeah, so the, I'm not even talking about, I'm talking about your business from your end. I'm not even talking about yeah. setting up on the platforms. I'm talking yeah. about um, yeah. it, this is the business end of things in the background for you as an author, not the how do I set it up on, set up my account on Amazon because that's mm -hmm. the next. And you I don't want, want any say, surprises. And I just want, want to say something here business. too. This is something that you <clears> want to, to do yourself. You don't want to pay somebody else to publish your book for you kind of thing. Don't do that. It's self-publishing here. Mm. and it might sound scary to do it yourself but actually it's not Look, we've all thousands of and... people are doing it every week yeah if, if they can do it you can totally do it mm -hmm. yeah it's just it's just like everything forms and <laughs> accounts and stuff like that you just gotta grit yeah. your teeth and get through it another thing you once might it's need done it's done yeah another thing you might need is a postal address for example yeah. to put on the bottom of newsletters things like yeah. that so um, that's like a post office box or if you can go um, shares with uh, with other people or if you've got a business address, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Don't yeah. use your home address. Yeah. Um, author email, which we'll talk about shortly soon in terms of websites. But so all of these things are things that you need to set up and figure out kind of, I, I think, before you start publishing I think even though you can you just kind of do. Yeah. get on there and publish I think you yeah. want to know you want to know for what what tax number you're going to use when you set up your platform mm -hmm. and if you don't know what kind of company or what kind of setup you're going to have then you're not going to know what tax number to use that kind of thing you know it's as simple as yeah. that so yeah. that's number seven number but don't, eight I, but don't stress about it it's, and and everything can be changed in the future as well so but it's mm -hmm. good to know yeah um, number eight, author nuts and bolts. So this is things like, are you going to have a pen name or are you mm. going to have your real name? Are you going to go wide or are you going to go exclusive to Amazon? Who knows? But these are decisions. Um, 
what social media platforms are you going to go on are you just going to do one or are you going to do all of them not the best idea i wouldn't recommend it no, um not straight up <laughs> not straight don't up. do it yeah. um newsletter are you going to have a newsletter what platform yes, are you going to you use? are yes, yes you yes. are sorry um yes, you are going to have a newsletter website you, how often are you going to send out the newsletter what's your website have, have you need to buy a um domain name for the website of your name that you've just decided is going to be joeblogs.com and the thing is yeah. don't be overawed by all of this take some yeah. time take yeah. a week take whatever mm -hmm. it takes you to just tick all these boxes and get them all done yeah and all the information you need about this is online yeah, yeah. and what it we is. can do it really is, is. and it can be you... done cheaply mm. as well to start off with um, we're not mm. saying go out and spend five thousand dollars on a no. custom designed author website that's to the start at the very least get a domain name and an email address with joe at joeblogs.com to use to send joe out your again. newsletter okay. and use your newsletter for example mm. um as a website but own your domain i would say always own your author domain name and mm. that's about you can have 20 like bucks a, a year a single page thing saying yeah. hi this you is can. me i'm awesome and you can here's and my book can, here's and the most, link website Buy it well, now. most hosting companies can have like a in-house kind of site builder like honestly you could pay your 15 year old child or neighbor to do it and it's super easy mm. my my daughter's um friend when she was 10 designed a website i'm just saying okay yeah mm, i could yeah. give you her contact that's a details. lot more accessible <laughs> these days Perhaps it not, really is yeah it really yeah. is yeah yeah so yeah. don't freak out about that but these are so we can also we are going to do a checklist I feel mm. as part yeah. of this so yeah we'll um, do a checklist and just so list we'll all these try things. and give you as many of these things as yeah. we can possibly think of to, yeah. so to think go about. check out spygirlspodcast.com look at the show notes for this episode and we'll put the link to the checklist in there yeah and okay, of course so if you're in our yeah facebook group you can always ask us questions mm, absolutely um, okay so number nine is the uploading prep so this is when you actually got everything organized and now we're thinking about uploading the book to the different sites so you've got the formatting of the book um, you need yep. to think about things like category and keywords you need to set up all your platform accounts so if you're going wide you know Kobo, Barnes and Noble, draft to digital Apple wherever you're going to set yourself up um, and then so for example on Amazon Author Central as well so this is just the the preparation to actually upload so yeah and with the uploading just remember too if you just are a bit freaked out by the way you can always just go through an aggregator like draft a digital and do it all through them. But of course, we recommend that you load to as many sites as you can. Mm. Sure. And also, if you don't want to go wide, it doesn't hurt you to stay exclusive to Amazon for the no. first 90 days. Exactly. I mean, it's a 90 day term, it's not going to kill you. You can also exactly. always decide to go wide later on. So yeah. that's mm -hmm. not a big deal either. Um, so, yeah, uploading. I mean, we've got lots of different episodes of the podcast on yeah. those kinds of things. So if you want more detail about that, just. Yeah. Same with formatting. The two the two biggies now uh, to format your novel are Vellum, which is uh, Mac exclusive, or Atticus, which is across all different um, operating systems. There are also free tools on Draft Digital and Readsy, mm. and you know, so there's it's of any author group search how to format a book and it's there mm. yeah all of these things but we've gone across all this in other episodes so don't yeah it's not yeah. something we just give you but it's just this is, that's the next a refresher. thing that's, that's mm. something that you need to think about as well and then number 10 is press the go button so mm -hmm. this is this is the publishing moment this is where you um are out there in the world um so there's not much to say about that other than hit press yeah, and, and how, I mean, how, however many books later, it's still exciting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still nerve wracking, actually. I, and I exciting, yeah. And you see the first, and you look at the copy and find the first mistake straight away, even yeah. though which you will do. Yeah. So, yeah. just some notes, you will do that. Yeah. <laughs> you, Those you suckers, will go man, through that, they're that, always there. You'll go through it with a fine tooth comb and guarantee on that first five pages, there'll be something in there, whether it's a typo or a, a weird comma somewhere but because you're self-published you can just go back in and change that's it that's it so and just know that deal. everything can be fixed everything you can change your cover mm. out you can upload uh revised text for the book it's all there 
still there and available to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So um, we might notice that we haven't really mentioned anything about marketing because I think that's a whole different kettle of fish. That's like yeah, once you've actually published or maybe or even... Yeah, like, although to be, do you want to really to be, get into marketing in your first book heavily? Yeah. Well, I don't here's think the do. thing. Marketing is actually, we've already covered a lot of that, yeah. which is decide what your genre is and yeah. you choosing your cover and you, you what your your content of your book is everything marketing as mm. in that's what your that's your product um and it is hard to separate the writer heart from the writer brain in this and i think that's that's a big part of this when you press publish is actually putting your business hat on rather than your kind of writer soul hat you know mm. or soul so part because it can be very painful to get um, an, a critical review or no response. No, you know, friends and family are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll buy it. Usually they don't. Yeah. Um, it's it's other readers, yeah. your friends and family are your audience. The funny thing is, it's, it's always it has been in my experience that it's not the people I expect to buy it who buy it, if that makes yeah. sense. Like yeah. I'm expecting, yeah. you know, like close family members and none of them buy it. And then great aunt Retha, who Gertrude yeah. did it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ruth comes yeah. back yeah. to me and says mm. yeah. whatever. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. I mean, mm. she, yeah. maybe she's a sci-fi fantasy reader and maybe she's more relevant to me so it's even better because you really don't want a whole bunch of people who aren't actually. Mm. I've got family members that buy my books and don't read them. Yeah. Well, at least they're yeah. buying them, me. right? Yeah. Just to support yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think temper your expectations about what mm. you might do, but the, how you might behave to support somebody else writing a book. But I think I see often quite a lot of her, her first timers and um, people Honestly, non-writers don't understand the no. blood, sweet blood and tears that go into into finishing a book to start off with, let alone actually going through the publishing process. So it's I don't think people mean to hurt you, but um, it, it can be hard. It, it's a, 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 a skin you will develop as you go on a thicker skin. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I think temper expectations about sales and about reviews. Right? Yeah, but I think the other thing is that you, we're talking about how the cover and the blurb are all part of the marketing and they're a part of the marketing that you have to get right yeah. to get the next step of the marketing to work. Correct. So they're definitely part of it, but yeah. the next step, the next part of it is something we definitely haven't talked about here, but we yeah. have in other episodes. So just We have a lot and, it's, and it covers promotion, it co covers social media, it covers paid advertising, but you have to make sure that the product, which I'm now using that deliberately, your book is now a product it's no longer a book of your heart um it can be but to other people it's a product that has to be right first you uh, you do not want to be wasting money on advertising or on expensive advertising courses if you don't nail the reader expectations in your book so the content and also yeah. the packaging which is your cover and blurb mm. so yeah it's all mixed in together it is and as we've discussed, yeah, this, your first book is often your apprenticeship, and mm -hmm. it's probably unlikely that you stopped and thought of the genre before you started writing it, and it probably mm -hmm. is fairly certain that you've mashed a whole bunch of different genres in there, mm -hmm. um, and probably means that your book may not be as easily marketable as a book that was designed to be or fit directly into a particular mm -hmm. genre, and that's not a bad thing because you no. are going through an apprenticeship and you're learning mm -hmm. and you wrote that book at, out of the blood sweat and tears from your heart yep. and it was you know you got it out there into the world and then now you need to write another one a, yeah. a one book does not make an author's career and exactly I like to use uh, Rebecca Yaros here as a, an example of that she had written was it eight or ten I think just sort of fairly standard romance novels mm. and then she wrote The Fourth Wing with you know throwing Which was dragons completely and... out of her wheelhouse yep. not something she'd ever written before and but she had that experience and I yeah. think the things that I love about that Fourth Wing and I'm a total fan of Fourth Wing by the way um is other other really sophisticated romantic elements that she's put mm. into that book even though it's a fantasy mm. novel it's romantic I mean fantasy romance but it's and I don't feel like a first-time author, I'm sorry, first-time authors out there, I don't mm. feel like a first-time author could no. have done the the things that she did because they were, they to me, felt very um, 
specific like she had yeah. done them not accidentally but because she knew that they would be yeah. the butter to use Theodora Taylor's yeah. universal fantasy don't terminology don't that first up is what you're saying right? trying to say yeah. in a roundabout way yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so and, and maybe uh, I don't know I mean there's always unicorns out there but it's yeah, always absolutely. unicorns and you might yeah. well be their unicorn but I don't mm. think you should and we hope rely you are. on operating that way and we hope mm. you are absolutely mm. Another person that's exactly the same is um, Jennifer Armentrout because mm -hmm. she she was again standard romances and they were good like they're good books. I'm not uh, and she'd done very well in her career and then she went oh, I've got this book and it's slightly outside my wheelhouse and I really want to write it but oh it's fantasy and it's uh, uh, and then she wrote it and it was best selling you know that um, so there's just. Yeah. stories like that or, or someone who you go oh well that person did really well on their first book well actually it's probably because it's a new pen name for yeah for this very person often who's actually, that's the case particularly yeah. if it has a huge amount of advertising behind it or push and it just hits like a bolt out of the blue or a series very Pippa, often Pippa Grant yeah. is another example mm -hmm. of that like she was someone who had a successful romance career under a different pen name um yeah. I don't even remember what triggered the change of pen name just no, she I don't either. um yeah. but she switched to Pippa Grant and she does really really yeah. well under that pen name now so it's I, yeah I think the point is that it's a journey and yes. you're in the beginning of the journey if this is your first or second book yeah um and not to not to overwhelm yourself with the pressures of no let it that, evolve you know you just don't know a lot to learn. it is an and evolution I, and yeah. the, if you've been listening to this and you're thinking I just I just want to press the button go you know I totally get that but I mean, you this can. Is, it's it's just, a, such a worthwhile thing to go through. This get process. all the groundwork Such down. a worthwhile yeah. thing. You yeah. will never once learn you've done it once. Yes, exactly. You mm. will never learn less. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, it's getting easier as technology improves. You know what we what we were doing ten years ago. It's so much easier now. For example, formatting mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, there's so many more tools now for authors, which also adds to the overwhelm because there are more tools. So it's a double edged sword. But it's, it's on such task. a worthwhile process, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. you will feel it might you might not enjoy it during, but you will feel and you should feel really good about yourself at the end of it. And not mm -hmm. just feel good, good but call. know that you've learned something, know yeah. that you've figured out something, and it's the first step in a process that's mm -hmm. going to be over. You know, that's going to for take your time career. And, for mm -hmm. your career. This is your first. Put the groundwork in now. Yeah, yeah. Invest in that. Get the groundwork invest right in now. Yourself. And I do but also it. just remember you can evolve and can change and exactly. things will change and you know you will change with them nothing's set in stone yeah mm. and I just want to say something as an old timer <laughs> um, it's still incredible to me that any one of us can publish a book on the world's biggest retail platforms to the mm. world to a global audience with with no gatekeepers like that's amazing you know the, the decades that all of us spent sitting in conferences hoping to engage the attention of an agent or an editor which was the mm. only way to get published I mean yes okay there was self-publishing but it usually involved printing off or photocopying copies and selling them kind of out of the back of your car at a you know in your garage kind of thing mm. but to actually be able to electronically upload a book and to be it, not just electronically but of any um any format it's it's incredible to me that we can mm. do that like it really is and and sometimes you have to be of a certain vintage to remember how it was before um but it's amazing and you can do it from anywhere in the world and yeah. for the the different processes that we've talked about here a lot of them can be actually if you don't have the funds to fund it then you can often do we've had authors that um, have swapped with with other authors like for editing services and for proofreading and things like that um, for the cover they will save up to get a cover you know designed or um, you know so or bartering for things you can do it for minimal cost you can do Mm -hmm. um and, yep. and don't get sucked in uh if, if there's any if you search self-publishing services online often there's some really scammy sort of vanity ones out there and they can be disguised hidden in plain sight um so always get uh always go onto author forums if you're considering one of those services and get advice from experienced authors and they will mm -hmm. usually point you out but it also, is an ex exciting journey it mm. is a really exciting journey 
It is, and, and you're one, doing and something one we that love. very yeah. few people do, yeah. even though it and can be overwhelming. Making a living doing something you love. Exactly. Mm. Or even and if it's not a living, it could be an, a really solid part-time yeah. income. It could yeah, be your exactly. holiday fund or whatever. There's nothing wrong mm. with it either. Mm. Mm. So we hope that you'll just go through, use this as a checklist or a guide to help you get that first book up and running. Um, even if you don't, well, you kind of Or need if to you've own. been a while and, and you're still not sure, it might help you with your third book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and think of it like a journey. This is not the the end destination. This is just the first step. So, mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. We are super excited that you. And finally, and... make sure to celebrate because yes. it is worthy of celebration. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, if someone has any questions about this episode, where can they find us, Shah? So I would say go to patreon.com forward slash spargirls podcast and look at our different tiers there. We have a $10 a month tier, which um, for a bargain price, which only works out at $2.50 per spargirl, can I just say, per month. <laughs> um, if for that, we'll come around, do your housework. Make, no, no, that's no, not true. No, because I don't even do my own. So <laughs> but you other can, people's housework. You can mm. join our Spargirls um, Superstars Mastermind Group, which is where we answer all things self-publishing in there, and we share tips and resources behind the scenes from the podcast. We go through um, new updates in self-publishing, and we work blurbs. It's it's a very collaborative thing in there, and that gives, us, gives you access to those. Um, if you want to go to our podcast page at spargirlspodcast.com which has got all our episodes and most importantly the show notes for this one uh, which will have the links uh, for our YouTube watches. You've got all our, well, the last 100, 200, I'm trying to think how many YouTube episodes we've got there. But if you're on YouTube, um, make sure that you subscribe because we put out a new video every week that will cover all these topics yeah absolutely awesome and thank you to everyone who's listened to this episode of the spa girls podcast we hope you're having an awesome time out there in the in the world um, yeah we'll keeping warm if you're in the northern hemisphere and keeping cool if you're in the southern <laughs> yes, absolutely so um we'll see you again next week but for now that's bye. us bye bye